George Augustine Nicholas Ruiz de Santillana y Borras, known as George Santillana, was a philosopher, essayist, poet, and novelist. Spanish-born, Santillana was raised and educated in the United States and identified himself as an American, although he always kept a valid Spanish passport. He wrote in English and is generally considered an American man of letters. At the age of 48, Santillana left his position at Harvard and returned to Europe permanently, never to return to the United States. His last wish was to be buried in the Spanish Pantheon in Rome. Santillana is popularly known for aphorisms such as, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it and only the dead have seen the end of war, although an atheist, he always treasured the Spanish Catholic values, practices and world view with which he was brought up. Santillana was a broad-ranging cultural critic spanning many disciplines. Biography Early life Born George Agustin Nicolas Ruiz de Santillana y Borras on December 16, 1863, in Madrid. He spent his early childhood in Avila, Spain. His mother, Josefina Borras, was the daughter of a Spanish official in the Philippines, and George was the only child of her second marriage. She was the widow of George Sturgis, a Boston merchant with whom she had five children, two of whom died in infancy. She lived in Boston for a few years following her husband's death in 1857, but in 1861 moved with her three surviving children to live in Madrid. There she encountered Agustin Ruiz de Santillana, an old friend from her years in the Philippines. They married in 1862. A colonial civil servant, Ruiz de Santillana was also a painter and minor intellectual. The family lived in Madrid and Avila until 1869, when Josefina Borras de Santillana returned to Boston with her three Sturgis children, as she had promised her first husband to raise the children in the United States. She left the six-year-old George with his father in Spain. George and his father followed her in 1872, but his father, finding neither Boston nor his wife's attitude to his liking, soon returned alone to Avila. He remained there the rest of his life. George did not see him again until he entered Harvard College and took his summer vacations in Spain. Sometime during this period, George's first name was anglicized as George, the English equivalent. Education Santiana attended Boston Latin School and Harvard College, where he studied under the philosophers William James and Josiah Royce and was involved in 11 clubs as an alternative to athletics. He was founder and president of the Philosophical Club, a member of the literary society known as the OK, an editor and cartoonist for the Harvard Lampoon, and co-founder of the literary journal The Harvard Monthly. In December 1885, he played the role of Lady Elfrida in the Hazy Pudding theatrical Robin Hood followed by the production Papalinetta in the spring of his senior year. After graduating Phi Beta Kappa from Harvard in 1886, Santiana studied for two years in Berlin. He then returned to Harvard to write his dissertation on Hermann Lotzer and teach philosophy, becoming part of the golden age of the Harvard philosophy department. Some of his Harvard students became famous in their own right, including T. S. Eliot, Robert Frost, Gertrude Stein, Horace Callan, Walter Lippmann, and W. E. B. Dubois. Wallace Stevens was not among his students but became a friend. From 1896 to 1897, Santiana studied at King's College, Cambridge. Later life in 1912, Santiana resigned his position at Harvard to spend the rest of his life in Europe. He had saved money and been aided by a legacy from his mother. After some years in Avila, Paris and Oxford, after 1920, he began to winter in Rome, eventually living there year-round until his death. During his 40 years in Europe, he wrote 19 books and declined several prestigious academic positions. Many of his visitors and correspondents were Americans, including his assistant and eventual literary executor, Daniel Corey. In later life, 
Santiano was financially comfortable, in part because his 1935 novel, The Last Puritan, had become an unexpected bestseller. In turn, he financially assisted a number of writers, including Bertrand Russell, with whom he was in fundamental disagreement, philosophically and politically. Santiana never married. His romantic life, if any, is not well understood. Some evidence, including a comment Santiana made late in life comparing himself to a E. Houseman, and his friendships with people who were openly homosexual and bisexual, has led scholars to speculate that Santiana was perhaps homosexual or bisexual himself but it remains unclear whether he had any actual heterosexual or homosexual relationships. Philosophical work and publications Santiana's main philosophical work consists of the sense of beauty. His first book-length monograph and perhaps the first major work on aesthetics written in the United States, The Life of Reason 5 Volumes, 1905-6. The high point of his Harvard career, skepticism and animal faith, and the realms of being. Although Santiana was not a pragmatist in the mold of William James, Charles Sanders Peirce, Josiah Royce, or John Dewey, The Life of Reason arguably is the first extended treatment of pragmatism written. Like many of the classical pragmatists, and because he was well versed in evolutionary theory, Santiana was committed to metaphysical naturalism. He believed that human cognition, cultural practices, and social institutions have evolved so as to harmonize with the conditions present in their environment. Their value may then be adjudged by the extent to which they facilitate human happiness. The alternate title to the life of reason, The Phases of Human Progress, is indicative of this metaphysical stance. Santiana was an early adherent of epiphenomenalism, but also admired the classical materialism of Democritus and Lucretius. He held Spinoza's writings in high regard, calling him his master and model. Although an atheist, he held a fairly benign view of religion, in contrast to Bertrand Russell who held that religion was harmful. Santiana's views on religion are outlined in his books Reason in Religion, The Idea of Christ in the Gospels, and Interpretations of Poetry and Religion. Santiana described himself as an aesthetic Catholic. He spent the last decade of his life at the convent of the Blue Nuns of the Little Company of Mary on the Celian Hill at 6 via Santo Stefano Rotondo, in Rome, where he was cared for by the Irish sisters. Man of Letters Santiana's one novel, The Last Puritan, is a Bildungsroman, centering on the personal growth of its protagonist, Oliver Alden. His Persons and Places is an autobiography. These works also contain many of his sharper opinions and bonds mots. He wrote books and essays on a wide range of subjects, including philosophy of a less technical sort, literary criticism, the history of ideas, politics, human nature, morals, the influence of religion on culture and social psychology, all with considerable wit and humor. While his writings on technical philosophy can be difficult, his other writings are far more accessible and pithy. He wrote poems and a few plays, and left an ample correspondence, much of it published only since 2000. Like Alexis de Tocqueville, Santiana observed American culture and character from a foreigner's point of view. Like William James, his friend and mentor, he wrote philosophy in a literary way. Ezra Pound includes Santiana among his many cultural references in the cantos, notably in Canto LXXXI and Canto XCV. Santiana is usually considered an American writer, although he declined to become an American citizen, resided in fascist Italy for decades, and said that he was most comfortable, intellectually and aesthetically, at Oxford University. Awards Royal Society of Literature Benson Medal, 1925 Columbia University Butler Gold Medal, 1945 Honorary degree from the University of Wisconsin, 1911. Legacy. 
Santiana is remembered in large part for his aphorisms, many of which have been so frequently used as to have become cliched. His philosophy has not fared quite as well. He is regarded by most as an excellent prose stylist, and Professor John Lux writes, in On Santiana, that his eloquence may ironically be the very cause of this neglect. Santiana influenced those around him, including Bertrand Russell, who Santiana single-handedly steered away from the ethics of G.E. Moore. He also influenced many prominent people such as Harvard students T. S. Eliot, Robert Frost, Gertrude Stein, Horace Callan, Walter Lippmann, E. B. Dubois, Conrad Aiken, Van Wyck Brooks, and Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, as well as Max Eastman and the poet Wallace Stevens. Stevens was especially influenced by Santiana's aesthetics and became a friend even though Stevens did not take courses taught by Santiana. Santiana is quoted by the Canadian-American sociologist Irving Goffman as a central influence in the thesis of his famous book The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. Religious historian Jerome A. Stone credits Santiana with contributing to the early thinking in the development of religious naturalism. English mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead quotes Santiana extensively in his magnum opus Process and Reality. Chuck Jones used Santiana's description of fanaticism as redoubling your effort after you've forgotten your aim to describe his cartoons starring Wiley, e. Coyote and Roadrunner. Bibliography. 1894. Sonnets and Other Verses. 1896. The Sense of Beauty. Being the Outline of Aesthetic Theory. 1899. Lucifer. A Theological Tragedy. 1900. Interpretations of Poetry and Religion. 1901. A Hermit of Carmel and Other Poems. 1905-1906. The Life of Reason. All the Phases of Human Progress. 5 vols. 1910. Three Philosophical Poets. Lucretius, Dante, and Goethe. 1913. Wind of Doctrine. Studies in Contemporary Opinion. 1915. Egotism in German Philosophy. 1920. Character and Opinion in the United States. With reminiscences of William James and Josiah Royce and Academic Life in America. 1920. Little Essays, drawn from the writings of George Santayana, by Logan Pearsall Smith, with the collaboration of the author. 1922, Soliloquies in England and later Soliloquies, 1922, Poems, 1923, Skepticism and Animal Faith, Introduction to a System of Philosophy, 1926, Dialogues in Limbo, 1927, Platonism and the Spiritual Life, 1927-40, The Realms of Being, 4 vols, 1931, the Genteel Tradition at Bay, 1933, Some Turns a Thought in Modern Philosophy, Five Essays, 1935, The Last Puritan, A Memoir in the Form of a Novel, 1936, Obiter Scripta, Lectures, Essays and Reviews, Justice Buckler and Benjamin Schwartz, Eds, 1944, Persons and Places, 1945, The Middle Span, 1946, The Idea of Christ in the Gospels, or, God in Man, A Critical Essay, 1948, Dialogues in Limbo, with Three New Dialogues, 1951, Dominations and Powers, Reflections on Liberty, Society, and Government, 1953, My Host the World, Posthumous Edited, Selected Works, 1955, The Letters of George Santayana, Daniel Corey, ed. Charles Scribner's Sons, New York, 1956. Essays in Literary Criticism of George Santayana, Irving Singer, ed. 1957. The Idler and His Works, and Other Essays. Daniel Corey, ed. 1967. The Genteel Tradition, Nine Essays by George Santayana.
Douglas L. Wilson, ed. 1967, George Santiana's America, Essays on Literature and Culture, James Belau, ed. 1967, Animal Faith and Spiritual Life, previously unpublished and uncollected writings by George Santiana with critical essays on his thought, John Lax, ed. 1968. Santiana on America, Essays, Notes, and Letters on American Life, Literature, and Philosophy. Richard Colton Leon, ed. 1968. Selected Critical Writings of George Santiana, 2 vols. Norman Henfrey, ed. 1969. Physical Order and Moral Liberty. Previously unpublished Essays of George Santiana. John and Shirley Lax, eds. 1979, The Complete Poems of George Santayana, a critical edition, edited, with an introduction, by W. G. Holtzberger, Bucknell University Press, 1995, The Birth of Reason and Other Essays, Daniel Corey, ed., with an introduction by Herman J. Southcamp, Jr., Columbia Univ. Press, 2009, The Essential Santayana, Selected writings edited by the Santiana edition, compiled and with an introduction by Martin A. Coleman, Bloomington, Indiana University Press. The works are George Santayana unmodernized critical editions of George Santayana's published and unpublished writing. The works is edited by the Santayana edition and published by the MIT Press. 1986. Persons and Places. Santiana's Autobiography, Incorporating Persons and Places, 1944, The Middle Span, 1945, and My Host the World, 1953, 1988, The Sense of Beauty, Being the Outline of Aesthetic Theory, 1990, Interpretations of Poetry and Religion, 1994, The Last Puritan, a memoir in the form of a novel, The Letters of George Santayana, containing over 3,000 of his letters, many discovered posthumously, to more than 350 recipients. 2001, Book 1, 1868-1909. 2001, Book 2, 1910-1920. 2002, Book 3, 1921-1927. 2003, Book 4, 1928-1932, 2003, Book 5, 1933-1936, 2004, Book 6, 1937-1940, 2006, Book 7, 1941-1947, 2008, Book 8, 1948-1952, 2011, George Santayana's Marginalia, a critical selection, books 1 and 2, compiled by John O. McCormick and edited by Kristen W. Frost, The Life of Reason in Five Books, 2011, Reason in Common Sense, 2013 Reason in Society, 2014, Reason in Religion.